When I was in my 10th grade math class many decades ago back in Australia, our teacher wrote on the back of the board, uh, back, class, back of the room classroom board, the following two equations. x plus y squared is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, and x plus y cubed equals x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. And we were expected to memorize those two formulas. I don't know why, but there they were for us to memorize for the first few weeks, and then off they went, and they're meant to be in our heads. Hmm. But I look at this now, and I say, oh, this is kind of curious, but I think if all the coefficients going on here with a coefficient of 1, it's really 1x squared 2xy plus 1y squared. I see 1, 2, 1. And the next one I see 1, 3, 3, 1, which is suspiciously like Pascal's triangle. In fact, if I keep going, let's go back a power, so x plus y to the 1th power, those are just going to be, oh, excuse me, x plus y. Well, 1, 1. Or x plus y to the 0th power is just going to be anything to 0 is 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. So that makes me think that I could probably guess that x plus y to the 4th power is going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now, what's going on with the powers of x's and y's? Is this? Well, if you look at the pattern, I've got x cubed, they've got x squared and 1y, so I've got x and y squared and y cubed. So I'm basically going down in steps by the powers of x, and I'm going up in steps by the powers of y, and everything is basically in going to be three uh, powers. So I've got an xxx, I've got an xxy, xyy, and a yyy. So everything's about three terms, three letters. So it's going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 with decreasing x's, increasing y's. So it's going to be x to the fourth, then it's going to be x cubed y for them, then 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed plus y to the fourth. Just squeeze it in. That feels like a prediction. Well, it is a prediction. In fact, if I kept going, x plus y to the fifth, should I should see the numbers 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. The numbers on the fifth row of Pascal's triangle and so on. So what I want to do now is prove that to be true and correct. Um, they give jargon to all sorts of things. I guess x plus y is called a binomial. So I guess what we're doing now is called the binomial theorem. What does the formula for expanding x plus y to the nth power look like? Okay, is it really just the en uh, entries of the nth row of Pascal's triangle? The answer is yes. So let's do it. Let's do it for x plus y to the fifth. But let me actually expand out x plus y to the fifth and see if we see the numbers 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. The entries of the fifth row come up. All right, I'm going to do it by hand. It's really x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. All right, here goes. I have plenty of battery power on my video camera. We're going to be here for a good hour expanding this out and writing it all out. Okay, not really. All right, first of all, sit back. How do you expand something? What do you need to do? I've got five sets of parentheses here. So basically, I need to select one term from each set of parentheses and go through all the possible combinations and add them up. That's what it means to expand brackets. Um, I will get x to the fifth. I can actually see that will happen for sure by choosing an x from here, x from here, x from here, x from here, x from here. There will be an x to the fifth term. In fact, that's the only way I'm going to get x to the fifth. If I choose anything but x in any one of these, I'll get a y coming along. There are no y's. This is the only way I'm going to get x to the fifth. Choose x, choose x, choose x, choose x, choose x. Grand. Um, well, let's get a little crazy. Will there be an x squared y cubed term? Okay, the answer is yes. Choose the x from here, choose the x from here, choose the y, choose the y, choose the y. So it comes from choosing the x, choosing the x, choosing the y, choosing the y, choosing, choosing the y. So there's x squared y cubed. But the thing is, that could appear in other ways. It doesn't have to be in that order. Maybe I could choose the x, sure, then choose a y, then a y, then another x, and then a y. That would also be x squared y cubed. Or maybe I could choose a y, a y, an x, and then a, a y, and then an x, then an x. Oop, too many. Whoops. That'll do. Three y's and two x's. y, y, x, y, x. Yep, that would be x squared y cubed. So actually, yes, x squared y cubed will appear but lots of different times. So now the question is, how many ways will x squared y cubed appear? How many times will it appear? Well, it appears in all the ways I can write an expression of five letters involving two x's and three y's. Well, I know exactly how to count that. That is, it's a five letter word with uh, two x's and three y's. The answer must be five factorial over two factorial or three factorial. In fact, that is an entry on the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. There it is, it's on the fifth row. But it's two places in from the left, three places in from the right. 
that really is an entry in fifth row. And let me guess, it's 120 divided by 2, 60 divided by 6 is 10. That is actually the number 10. So there's going to be 10 of those guys. It's that entry on the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. In fact, there's going to be some uh, x, y to the fourths as well. How many x, y to the fourths are there? How many ways to arrange 1x and 4 y's, essentially? That's going to be 5 factorial, 1x, 4 y's. Again, the next entry on Pascal's triangle. So actually, uh, what is it? That's going to be 5 that time. I can go through and now I can argue, yes, indeed. As I expand x plus y to the fifth power, the cofinches I'm going to get are indeed the fifth row entries of Pascal's triangle. Or expand x plus y to the nth power, I will get the nth row entries of Pascal's triangle. In fact, let me write that out. Let me sort of a half state the binomial theorem in full. Da -da 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 -da. If I were to expand, let's do it in red, because it's important, maybe. x plus y to the nth power. Yes, there would be an x to the n, coming from choosing x and x and x and x and x. And there would be more and more stuff. In fact, in general, in the middle of this great big expansion, I'll have some x to the a, some y to the b, where a and b add up to n. There's always going to be n letters. And what's the coefficient going to be? Well, it's how many ways to range, basically, uh, n letters, n factorial, over ax's, by's. That's it. That's what the entry for x to the a, y to the b looks like. And keep going that, and you'll end off with, I guess, choosing y all the time, a single y to the n. So there is the binomial theorem. In fact, you would have no trouble right now writing a general formula for the trinomial theorem, or the quadrinomial theorem, or the pentanomial theorem, if this excites you. Wow. All right, but let me play with this, because I've got another point to make. I mean, I do wish that my 10th grade mathematics teacher talked about Pascal's triangle and its connections to the binomial theorem because memorizing these two would have been a piece of cake. I wouldn't have to memorize anything. I'd just kind of know it. Um, this was just mysterious to me as a 10th grader, but now it makes perfect sense and it's beautiful. My other point I want to make is that in an algebra class, people often forget that x can actually be a number. So let's actually choose some numbers for these crazy formulas and see what it gives us. In fact, I'll focus on just say x plus y to the fourth right now, so I've got that formula staring me in the face. But let's do something crazy. Let's actually put in a number for x and a number for y. Let's put x equals 1 and y equals 1. I'll choose very easy numbers. So that tells me 1 plus 1 to the fourth power. 1 plus 1 to the fourth. That's 2 to the fourth. That's 16. Equals. According to this formula, It'll be 1 to the 4th, 1, plus 4 times 1 cubed times 1, it's 4 times 1 times 1, that's 4, plus 6 times 1 squared, 1 squared, 6, plus 4 times 1 times 1 cubed, 4, plus 1 to the 4th, 1. It gives me the sum of the entries in the 4th row of Pascal's triangle. I think we've now just proved again that the sum of entries in the 4th row of Pascal's triangle must be 2 to the 4th, 16. We did them in the previous lecture by, by geometry, but there it is by the algebra as well, just by choosing x equals 1, y equals 1. Wow. But let's keep going. Let's choose different values for x and y. Let's put, well, let me connect it to the previous lecture. Let's put x equals x equals 1, y equals negative 1. If I do that this time, 1 plus negative 1 to the 4th power. What's 1 plus negative 1? 0. 0 fourth power is 0. So I get 0 equals, all right, the number of theorem says, uh, 1 and negative 1. 1 to the 4th, that's 1. Plus 4 times 1 cubed times negative 1. Well, that's negative 4. Plus 6 times 1 squared times negative 1 squared. Uh, that's all going to be positive, plus 6. Uh, plus 4 times 1 times negative 1 cubed. It's all going to be negative, negative 4, plus negative 1 to the 4th power, plus 1. I see out comes the alternating sum of the entries of the 4th row of Pascal's triangle. And by pure algebra, by the binomial theorem, that alternating sum just has to be 0, because after all it's just 1 plus negative 1 to the 4th power. In fact, you can get crazy and put in all sorts of interesting numbers like 2 and negative 1, or 2 and 3, or who knows what you want to do? Every time you do that, you'll get some curious, weird property of Pascal's triangle that would freak out your colleagues and classmates if you just came in every day with a new property you discover. Wow. But let me now finish off with the one that I've been having hanging over our heads for the last number of lectures, the powers of 11. 
Well, let's just put x equals 10, y equals 1. Because what would I get? 10 plus 1 to the 4th power. It's telling me 11 to the 4th power is, aha, uh -huh, x is 10. 10 to the 4th. That's, uh, well, let me, be, let me be very clear with the coefficients. It's 1 times 10 to the 4th. It's 1 10,000 plus 4 times 10 cubed times 1. That's uh, 4,000 plus 4 thousands plus 6 times 10 squared, 100 times 1 squared, still 6 times 100, plus 4 times 10 times 1 cubed, plus 4 times 10, plus 1 times 1 cubed, plus 1 times 1. Add them all up. I can see I've actually got place value going on. I've got the 1's place, the 10's place, the 100's place, the 1,000's place, 10,000's place. I get 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. I think I'm just off the bottom of the screen, sorry. It's 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And in fact, if you did it for the fifth row, uh, you would get 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And with all the carrying, you would then get the answer you see on your calculator when you put an 11 to the fifth, which I believe is 1, uh, 6, 1, 0, 5, 1 is 11 to the fifth. What I do there, you can see my exploding dots, of course. That makes sense in exploding dots. But there it is. Putting in x equals 10, y equals 1, explains why the powers of 11 are intimately connected with Pascal's triangle. In fact, I invite you to put in x equals 100 and y equals 1, and you'll find that the powers of 101 are intimately connected with Pascal's triangle. In fact, look at 101 to the fourth power on a calculator, 101 to the fifth power on a calculator, and so on. And then explain what you're seeing is true by this theorem. This is absolutely lovely stuff. There is so much more to discover and play with. I've got lots and lots of practice problems under this video um, in the next few sections as well. Hours and hours of sheer joy and delight exploring Pascal's triangle and all its amazing, amazing properties. So uh, have fun with it all. Uh, check all the, video, the text under these videos. Have a look at the companion guide to this course. It has all the solutions for you if you really get stuck. And um, grand, just have fun. This is beautiful, mighty grand work. Thanks so much.